Hello you guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome, or welcome back, either way. And so today I wanted to talk to you guys about all of this craziness that's going on with inflation, gas prices, grocery prices, all of these things. And all of this seems very overwhelming and we're, it's, you know, coming at us from everywhere. Whether it's, uh, you know, online, uh, the news, people talking about it at work, all of that kind of stuff. And it seems to be that people are in panic mode. Now, I'm going to give you some kind of tips. They're not tricks, because there's no trick to helping with this. Tips, though. And so, the first few are going to be more, uh, you know, different ways we can prepare ourselves uh, mentally, I guess. And then the last few will be pretty tactical. So if that if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around, because here we go. So the number one thing I would say that we don't want to do in these crazy times is we don't want to panic. Panicking causes people to go over a cliff. We're not trying to go over a cliff. We're just trying to make it through the storm. So what we're going to do is we're not going to panic first and foremost, so that we can think about this with a clear mind. That will be the most beneficial thing completely is being able to think about, you know, everything that we need to think about with a clear mind and not through the lens of fear. Fear makes us do all kinds of stupid things, makes us do stupid purchases, make awful decisions, all of that. We're bypassing that because we're not going to panic. We're going to figure out what we need to do. We're going to, number two, we're going to figure out what's in our control. So what is our, in our, you know, gas prices, grocery prices, all of this stuff, that's not in our control. But what is in our control is how we use what we have to benefit, you know, our situation. What do we have at our disposal? What are our resources that we have? Do we have a little bit of money in savings? Do we have a little bit of extra time to possibly bring in a little bit more income? Maybe have some overtime, maybe get a side hustle, maybe, uh, you know, mow the neighbor's grass. I don't know, whatever it is, but we all have some things that we could do for the most part to, to bring in a little extra money. And right now that would be super beneficial. Number three thing that is going to benefit us right now is realizing that during uncertain times causes us to, you know, I don't know, make decisions about different purchases. Like for example, shopping when we wouldn't, we wouldn't normally, but it, it makes us feel good, you know, gives us that little hit of dopamine and that's something that I just want all of us to be aware of because that happens during times like this. I think it's called, I think, I don't know where it came from, but I heard it called uh, the lipstick economy. So during, say, recessions or downturns in the economy, lipstick is, you know, something that is sold a lot more of and their sales go through the roof because people are trying to feel better. Now, Nothing that we're going to buy is going to make us feel better. It's not going to make us feel more secure. It's just not. It never has, and it's probably not ever going to start. So that's something I want us to be aware of, is that buying more is not going to make our situation better. It's not going to help anything. And if we're still in a position where we're spending a lot more time at home, it's going to make us not want to be there because we're going to have more crap in our house than we started than we started with. Which, as we know from the last couple of years, nobody wants that. You know, people are trying to clean out their houses and all of that to clear their mind, to clear their space and their surroundings, which is probably a way better idea. If we want to do that, if, you know, if we want to make our space feel better, Maybe the best way to do it would be to get rid of some of that stuff. Maybe make some extra money by selling some of that stuff instead of keeping it in our surroundings 
and just making us more crazy than we need to be. Learning to say no. Whether that's to family, to friends, to our kids. And I just want to say, it is not going to hurt our kids to hear no. And it's okay if they feel some of this, you know, some of this um, angst or uncertainty or whatever. It's okay. Because they're learning how to deal with it from watching us. Which is another thing to keep in mind. Because this isn't the first time this has happened. As far as crazy prices and all of that. And it won't be the last. And they're going to have to deal with it in their lifetime. Probably several times like the rest of us. So it's important that we show them different healthy steps to take. To where it's not all consuming. Like... Here's the next one, ha taking our power, like figuring out what our numbers are. For example, if, if gas has gone up by, say, a, let's just gonna say a dollar for easy numbers. If gas, gas has gone up a dollar a gallon and I do my math and I realize that, oh, okay, this isn't, you know, the sky is falling. This is, this may cost me another $87 a month. However, $87 a month, you guys, in the grand scheme of things, is three pizzas. Or twice going out to dinner. That's it. That's it. That's all it is. I say that's all it is. I'm not saying $87 is not a lot of money. My point is, is once you know what those numbers are, you know how much you need to adjust your budget or your spending plan accordingly. That is super important because we're not just going to ride this wave. We're doing this on purpose and with intention. Being intentional through this time, as it is any other time, is the key to making sure that we are successful in whatever it is our plans are, our goals, our future, and all that. So that, that's what I would say for knowing your numbers is that is imperative. Because when you know what the numbers are, you're not guessing. And then you have something to work with and you have a jumping off point. And just knowing that's where your power is. You have the power to figure out making a plan to figure out, okay, this is what I need to do. And this is the game plan. Let's, let's execute it. So now that we know what our numbers are, now's a good time to figure out an action plan. So do we need to cut expenses? Do we need to uh, add some income by maybe getting a side hustle, another job, overtime, whatever the case may be? What do we need to do to make sure that our budget, our spending plan, you know, still is workable and we can still move forward with, with our goals, our plans and whatever. And this isn't forever. This is for a certain amount of time. And the next thing that I wanted to say is figuring out how to, if we are in a position where we're going into the red, Chances are we were dangerously close to that before this happened. Um, you know, maybe only had a little bit of margin. And I would say that the biggest takeaway from all of this stuff going on is how do I make sure that next time this happens, because it will, as we know, how do I make sure that me and mine are in a better position to deal with this next time than we were this time. What are the things that I can take into the next time, things that I've learned and realize wholeheartedly, I learned the lesson, you know? So those kinds of things, maybe uh, learning how to be more frugal. I know this is a frugal living channel and it might seem kind of self-serving, but that is good to know, uh, to have, you know, some tricks up your sleeves, some tips for any time of your life. It's not 
just poor people that are frugal, you guys. Even people who are in a, a, a different spot financially, like whether you're poor, whether you're middle class, whether you're rich, whatever, everybody can benefit from being frugal. It's a, it's a mindset. It's not just, it's not a, a money amount or anything like that. So I wanted to really encourage you to look at this with your eyes open and look at it wholeheartedly. And what can you do? Are you in a better position than you thought? Maybe that's an option too. You know, maybe you're in a better position than you were thinking once you sat down and ran out your numbers. You know, when you sat down and figured out how much money you're bringing in and what your expenses are and what your expenses are projected to be with everything going up. Maybe you realized that there was nothing to worry horribly about and, you know, wait, you know, keeping yourself up at night, worrying terribly. There was no reason to. Yeah, it's a storm. Yeah, we're going to weather it. And it's just one of those things in life. We can't do anything about it. So we have to control the controllables. And those things are what we spend. How we spend our time. Could we spend our time better? You know, what we spend our money on. Could we spend our money in a better way? Or could we, you know, put more in savings since we're not spending it because we do know things are going up. So maybe that's something that we do as a peace of mind is, you know, put, if we do have anything extra in savings, we could put it, you know, we could put that extra in savings as a little bit of a, so that we can sleep at night. So I hope, I hope, you know, these helped you. And I would like to know, what are you doing? And we would all like to know, what are you doing to, you know, help yourself and your family in this situation? And if you have any tips or tricks, this was kind of just a, a bullet point video, a few, you know, mindset things and then a few action steps. And I would like to know, did I miss any? What are your ideas? And we would all love to know what they are. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.